Seneca diagram does a good job of giving us guidance for how to begin to size overhangs and fins, uh, but it's also useful to look a little bit more depth at the um, facades themselves or specific design and to check and see that it's actually functioning as the sun path theoretically shows that it would. So I'm going to clear these um, angles and I'm going to show you a way of presenting this to yourself so you can understand exactly where the shadows fall and uh, how this works. So I'm going to maximize my tray here and uh, show you a way of uh, visualizing this using SketchUp. The, um, what we're going to do is make some elevations first. So uh, to make an elevation, um, we want to click into the um, facade. And once I've got a face selected, I'm going to right click and select Align View. This will align the view uh, to that uh, perpendicular to that face. And now I'm going to go into view, or sorry, camera, and instead of a perspective, I'm going to go to parallel projection. So now I'm seeing a parallel projection of that entire facade. Now I'm just concerned for this uh, about this facade, these six uh, windows right here. And so I'm going to zoom in and then um, I'm going to make a scene which will capture this for later. So I'm going to press, go to scene, press plus. I'm going to call this scene um, West Elevation. And instead of saving the axis location like we did before, we're going to save the camera location in this one. And now I'm going to update that. Um, so now if I go somewhere else and I double click on the West Elevation, it'll come back to there. I'm going to do the same on my, all, for all of my elevation. So in this case, I just have two, west and north. I'm going to do the same thing for my north elevation, align the view, and then I'm going to zoom in on just that north part and make a new scene just for the north elevation. So now I can toggle between the two, west and north. Now I can uh, look at the effect of the shadows. Make sure that your model is geolocated, so you have the right latitude and longitude. In this case, it's, it's not accurately located. It says it's in Chicago. So I'm going to um, clear the location and go back to here. And now it's in the correct latitude and longitude. And this will make sure that my sun settings are correct. So I go to shadows now. I can turn on shadows by toggling with this. And using this slider or these manual inputs here, I can change the time and date. Now the, the good dates to look at are the extremes of the climate or the particular latitude and longitude, which are going to be the winter solstice, the equinox, and the summer solstice. The winter solstice is December 21st, and we can look at this throughout the day. We can start at sunrise at 7 a.m. So let's go to the afternoon here so you can see this a little better. So make sure that these sliders are uh, set so that light is at 100 so you can see what's going on in your model. And dark is set fairly dark so you can see the shadows there. And uh, use, click Use Sun for shading on the facade and display on faces. So uh, with these settings, you should be able to see fairly clearly and quickly where the shadows are falling on your facade and how effective your overhangs are. So for instance, on this overhang, um, we can see that it starts completely shading the window somewhere between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock. And then uh, in the winter time, by 5 o'clock, uh, the sun has set. At 4 o'clock, the sun is coming almost straight in. 
and worth noting that the only way that I could actually shade this is probably with some dynamic device that uh, moved, because uh, otherwise you're just blocking the view completely of the window in the daylight. Once you know these uh, sort of boundary conditions, to print some screenshots of these, you can do this by going to File, Export, 2D Graphic, and I would call this uh, December 1 p.m. I, I tend to do this in military time, so like December 13, like that. And I'm just put this on my desktop for now. And it takes a little second, a couple seconds, and depending on the complexity of your model. And then go to 2 p.m. and do the same thing. 3 p.m. and export. By the way, you can go to options here and select the size, but uh, I'm happy with this size. And keep doing this throughout for, for the day until you get to sunset, 5 p.m. Now I can go to my equinox in March and do the same exercise again. Go to when the sun first starts coming over here at 1 p.m., then 2, and 3, 4, and 5, 6, and then at June in the summer solstice, and the same thing, 1 p.m., 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now on the north facade, it sometimes surprises people that sun does come over here in the summertime. And you can see that in March, we never get sun on this side of the building. But in June, we do. From about 5 p.m. on uh, until sunset. And so it's good to know when this is and how much this actually um, shades that facade. In this case, these fins are doing a lot of the work compared to the overhang. And so once you've got this, um, I suggest laying out those PNGs in InDesign and comparing how effective they are to what your sun path diagram said that they would be. And then if you have time, do the same exercise again, but using a more optimized sunshade, one that is more effective for the times that you need it. And don't be afraid to test dynamic shades here. Uh, there's a lot of good solutions such as awnings or Venetian blinds or, um, or fabric shades that are extremely effective, particularly on the west and the east, in uh, providing shade when you need them and then providing sun when you don't.